So can you see the screen is document? screen is visible? Oh yeah, full screen one, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so we should yeah. start. This. Yes, yes. Give me two minutes, ma'am. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I take India welcomes all the participants for today's national distance learning seminar session. Today's topic is elimination of vertical transmission of HIV and syphilis, that is EVTHS, and the speaker is Dr. Vibhavari Deshmukh. Dr. Vibhavari Deshmukh, ma'am, is currently working as a national consultant, HIV counseling and testing services, and elimination of mother to child transmission of HIV with the basic services division at NACO. She has a doctorate in health system studies and a master's in hospital management from TISS Mumbai. She has worked at the national and regional level across multiple organizations like WHO, TISS, SATI, etc. We welcome you, ma'am, for today's session and request you to start this session. Thank you, Swetha ji, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining this important sessions. As uh, Swetha has informed you about the objective of the uh, today's session, I would like to reiterate it uh, that this today's session is very important for me because I got an opportunity to connect all the IIT centers. And as for the elimination of vertical transmission of HIV and syphilis, the ART centers are the nodal uh, point for the care of the HIV infected woman. So this is an opportunity for me to share with you the updates and uh, you know the what is our asks you know request from you. So this is you covered already I think Swetaji right? I was just closing the window that time. No so, no ma'am no this has not been covered. Okay. I thought you were covered. Okay, so by end of this session, uh, the participant would be able to understand four prong strategy. You must have heard about it, but now in the as a uh, few of you are aware, we have already started first phase implementation of EBTH guidelines in uh, seven state high priority state. So we have focusing not only the pregnant woman, which is in our cascade. We are also looking at the prong one, prong two, which talks about primary prevention and uh, unintended pregnancy. So this is something is what we are looking towards to look, you know, today's session to understand from four prong. Then management of pregnant woman living with HIV and ARV prophylaxis. It is care of HIV exposed infants will be uh, taken in the separate session. So we will primarily focus on at the point of pregnant woman uh, living with HIV. And then there are a few slides on the syphilis infected pregnant woman and expose infants, syphilis exposed infant at the last, because there will be few cases of the co-infected syphilis, a co-infected uh, pregnant woman and exposed infants. So these are the four prongs. Can, can we, excuse yes? me, can we quickly uh -huh. run the pretest, please? Oh, yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kiran, sir, can we have the e poll? Thank you. The e poll questions are now visible on your screen. Please go through all the questions, scroll them, and answer. Answer the questions, please. We have five minutes to complete the e poll. So till uh, the uh, 
uh, participant answer the questions. So we have uh, across all the India this part ART centers uh, present and the yes, ma'am. So what is uh, MK, all ART centers joined because I was trying to see the attendance. Uh, no, ma'am. No, we have we requested the SACs to uh, forward the invitation on the WhatsApp groups as well. We have already mm -hmm. done that on the email IDs. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, further to that, we have also requested SACs to forward the invites. So we are hoping that uh, people will be soon joining. Okay. requesting all the participants to please attempt the e-poll please scroll through all the four questions five questions and answer them Kiran sir, we can end the e-poll. Thank you. Oh, Ma'am, you are requested to please continue the session. I was just checking whether I can have pain or highlight. Here I don't know why the options are... Yeah, I don't know why the options are... Yeah, I don't know why the options are... So, uh, coming back to our newer course prong. So, now it's the equal emphasis of HIV and syphilis. So, initially the course prong international guidelines were available for HIV. So, we have tried to club the for the syphilis also for the Indian guidelines. So, prong one talks about primary prevention of HIV, especially among the women of childbearing age. So, what is the childbearing age? 15 to 49, right? So, this is a childbearing age, uh, we want to prevent the woman to get infected so that, that there is no chance of further transmission. In the prong 2, uh, prong 1 also applicable for the syphilis also. And then because both are the uh, mode of the transmission almost same. So, it is like when we send the intervention for the high, at risk group and high risk group, it is uh, answered through and it, it takes care of HIV and syphilis. Prong, Two is about preventing unintended pregnancy. It is primarily applicable to only HIV because in the HIV, we do not want the unwanted, uh, unintended pregnancy. It, we want intended pregnancy. Okay, let's put it positively. So that when there's intended pregnancy, the adequate care has been taken that the mother is viral suppressed and other things. We are going to see in the next few slides that. So this is, but this may not be applicable for the syphilis uh, part. So it is wrong to primarily is related to the HIV. From three is about the prevention of HIV and syphilis transmission pregnant women to their children. So all the interventions which you give to during pregnancy, which is like early identification, we start from the early registration for the ANC care, early HIV syphilis testing, and then the, all the intervention, ART uh, to mother and include, uh, ensuring viral separations uh, during pregnancy and breastfeeding period. From four talks about providing care, support, and treatment to infected pregnant women and their partner and anybody. So here we give the holistic care to the, not only to pregnant women, but uh, her family, and uh, we manage the exposed infant. It is mentioned in management of syphilis exposed infant, but it's not only syphilis, it's HIV exposed infant also. So these are some service delivery model, uh, but we include in the primary prevention. We including the primary pre prevention adolescent health services prevention among hrgs and at risk women which are primarily taken care at ti centers and ict centers but what is most important part is uh, is the one which is we have uh, mentioned here is a 
prevention of among the discordant couples particularly where there is a um, you know male partner is positive and woman is negative and she is from reproductive age group so here the prevention is part is very very important uh, and then this is something which you can be done at art centers right so this is component we are we are working how we can have the dualist of the serial discordant couple where male partner is positive and female partners wife spouse of partner is negative and how we can use it so we will be coming up with some further guide, guidance on this but this is something can be done at art center we have other also communication and community engagement and access to prevent sir, preventive services family planning services this is something absolutely with the art centers because primarily women living with hiv are uh, uh, coming regularly to art centers and here the role of the counselors uh, particularly is very important you know along with other counseling to have the family planning counseling and you know linkages to the uh, services this is screening part is majorly you we all aware but in this we are in, looking particularly for real testing something which is it's we have not done optimally across all these centers so we have to gear up and scale up the real testing for the priority population that like women uh, pregnant women living with hiv and the breastfeeding women uh okay and then the treatment monitoring for the syphilis so syphilis like the for the hiv the art center is a nodal point for the syphilis this is this rc will be the nodal point so uh, i will touch some part of the syphilis but i uh, i will just for the management of the uh, syphilis infected co infected woman but the care of the syphilis infected woman who are not otherwise hiv negative will be at dsrc okay will be at dsrc similarly management of syphilis uh, and hiv uh, syphilis exposed infant and child will be uh, included in the care cascade where we have we will see in the next few slides so primary prevention these are a lot of intervention which we uh, use it but uh, we have done but uh, because uh, uh, for the focusing on what art centers apart from this awareness campaign and you will give adolescent health services also step up sex promotions and other part what is most important is that art center again i'm reiterating which is the last statement okay so hiv transmission must be prevented from hiv positive male to the hiv negative female partner and spouse from reproductive age and here is the key role because uh, you must have also observe because you are more in the field and you see cases daily that we have seen uh, especially the lfu cases male uh, partner is you know uh, reproductive age group he gets married and then he you know he is not on art and then he come back so we you know uh, test his wife uh bring pregnancy and we say she's positive and when we trace back at the, at the spouse testing then we realize oh that you know person was the lfu hiv positive the hiv so something we need to do is we need to uh, look at more closely now because we are going for the ebths and we want to eliminate vertical transmission so we have to go more closely and see how we can prevent at least the cascade which we have in the art centers where we know the status of the people and part their partner so where we can prevent the uh, infection to the women so that it cannot be transmitted in the next generation family planning services uh, we ensure that people living with hiv have access to stigma free family planning services uh, what we found from the field uh, because we uh, work for the ebths that there are women uh, who wants to have the services but they have been denied from the family planning services we what we found that uh, especially this is true for the limiting uh, methods and the limiting methods are anybody wants to answer in chat box what is the limiting method means you can use chat box to uh, answer some questions so limiting method is permanent methods like tubectomy and uh, you know Uh, sterilization various so male so with the tommy so uh, what we have done uh, you know what we have found that our jo partner global fund partners are they are trying to get the line list of the pregnant woman living with hiv who wants to after delivery wants to have the uh, family planning services permanent specially 
and they are coordinating with family planning divisions uh, but at the art center also because now we are not only because not to look only for the current pregnant woman we can see all the women living with hiv and we can ask them whether they want they would like to have the family planning services and i am sure every woman would like to have the family planning services and they want to control the you know uh, pregnancies and have have the timely pregnancy so uh, this is something which is very important where art centers play a crucial role and we would you know requesting all the especially the art counselors who are here uh, counselors who are at a place at art because now the all counselors are same in nsp so all the nsp counselors who are placed at art centers they have more opportunity to render the family planning services so all the counselors has to provide the services but particularly the counselor who are uh, deputed at art centers have the special role to play and provide the counseling to the uh, uh, to the all the arrows and nothing okay so provide the services at the uh, art center so what is there you counsel them and then you can uh, identify assess the family planning requirement of plhiv and you link them to the family planning centers okay so link them to family plan planning center and if you feel it is any stigma discrimination we are doing the advocacy at national and state level for the, with the family planning division so you can raise this issue with the stigma discrimination persist and ensure that their services are being provided to them preconception care is going to come the bigger role in the evt hss we have started monitoring the vl test vl uh, test uh, vl uh, uh, viral load in the pregnant woman so this is something we are going to do. if and an average around 55% 55% of the pregnant woman are known pregnant woman that means they are aware of their status prior to their pregnancy right so if you see then women are aware of the status before pregnancy we have a huge opportunity to give the preconception care so what we have to where we can give the preconception we have to give preconception care for all the partners okay all the couples like where the one or both the partners are infected with hiv and they desire to have a child so help them to make decision and help them to make decision whether they want to have a child and if they want to have a child when they want to have a child because timing also is important ART council is responsible for providing comprehensive family planning counseling during the session or at the ART centers so you we have included this uh, training on the family planning in our counselor module we all the state are going to roll out that training soon so we have ensured that family planning counseling is a some sub part of it so ART council should provide a counseling on the com comprehensive family planning and counseling or uh, you know pregnancy planning also so there is like when the woman should be at optimal health her hb should be good her weight should be good and most important her viral load is suppressed her and her partner both if the both are positive so their viral load should be suppressed and cd4 should be good condition cd4 is in the good uh, at the good level so this is all important and the art comes uh, okay so this is something going okay so they provide the at this slide has changed council should ensure so why council should ensure viral suppression in the plha before they plan pregnancy i said about that optimum art adherence and uh, optimal health as i said the hp weight and she should be put on the folic acid uh, supplementary which we give uh, you know 3 months uh, 12 weeks before uh, pregnancy so this is all very important part Uh, and most important is if there is additional you know we have to screen them for the managing sti and rti because we all next slide you will see if the you know if there is a sti or rti then the chances of transmission is more so we have to also screen and manage if there is any sti and rti so management of pregnant women living with hiv and exposed infants so if you see the estimation the latest estimation what we have in 2021 around 20612 pregnant women are uh, um, you know are approximate we estimated that in india all over the india and we have given the state wide estimation also and they will require the care is always in the range because estimation is comes range to 16000 to 26000 
but this is a very important slide and here the role of your important role of the art center see with no arv no art treatment to mother no arv to the baby no and then mother is breast free the chances of transmission is 30 to 45% okay but if you give the art drugs to the baby mother and and then breast free also then the percentage coming down so much is like from the 44% down to the 2% this is somewhere it's a big role of art centers you are doing a wonderful job if you can ensure the art adherence and viral load suppression you will bring the infection rate 45% straight forward you know low as a 2% so here something which uh, i want to bring your attention and how important is your role uh, i want to highlight that so prevention of vertical transmission that as we seen in the previous slide can happen at during pregnancy labor and delivery and breastfeeding so ongoing breastfeeding also there is a risk of transmission but what is the single most factor which increases the transmission rate is hiv virus in the mother's blood right so if that is why art adherence and viral load suppression is very very important for to prevent the vertical transmission maternal obstetric and infant factors so if you see what are the other factors which will increase the hiv transmission rate so first single most factors we already said the viral load in the mother so that is the most defined defining factor but few things i want to highlight uh, apart from like recent infection when the viral load as you are you are all expert in the hiv yeah so recent hiv infection when the viral load is very high so that is also risk then high viral load and advanced disease something this is very important i want to pay you, your attention here so there are some mothers who will be in this category so this is something is you can check assess and identify recent hiv infection you may not be able to you know identify oh this mother may have recent and this mother may not have but for this high viral load and advanced hiv disease, you can easily you can understand oh this mother and this mother you please follow up that mother more closely okay where the chance of transmission is more resistance strain advanced clinical stage again if you are aware concurrent sti and viral uh, viral bacteria and parasitic infections present the infection malnourishment this is again i want to draw your attention here because i have seen the mothers with 34 kg 35 kg even in haryana somebody was telling she saw with 30 kg if it's such a severe malnourished mother there will be risks of transmission more and this is something where you can do the nutritional counseling and pre conception care because most of the 55% of mothers are our known mothers so we can do something for them for sure and i request you to you know pay here the attention and take this message ki these are the mothers whom you will need to give more attention okay and then other breastfeeding like nipple breast uh, breast abscess and mastitis all this uh, points which add the because there's a chances of transmission for the skirts and then when the mother baby best breed there's a chances of transmission through the milk obstetric factor we are aware and that's why we this is something which for we have to do the birth planning so that the we can ask the mother where we can uh, she is you know she is planning to deliver and we can uh, ensure that the obstetrician there are aware of this uh, factors okay so anything with uterine manipulation prolonged rupture of the membranes and placenta abruption chorio amnotritis intrapartum hemorrhage invasive delivery techniques like episiotomy forceps vacuums okay invasive fetal monitoring all those will factors will add the transmission rate uh and then infant factors uh, which we say premature immune system with the preterm babies low birth weight with babies if the multiple birth first infant of the multiple birth immature gastro gastrointestinal tract the reason behind this all like immune uh, immature immune system preterm and immature gastro basically in this baby the gastrointestinal tract is immature and there the chances of the virus enter when the through the breastfeeding enters or when the then deliver the some blood enters in the amniotic fluid enters in the baby's uh, baby chi so there will be if because it inflamed chi tract there's maybe minute uh, erosions and that can absorb the 
infected virus and then there is a chance chances of transmission okay so this is basic the reason why there is increased chance of transmission in the uh, immature gastrointestinal tract this is something last point i want again your attention here we will talk this later maybe in the slide or maybe in, when we will discuss um, somebody will discuss with you the session of hiv exposed care the you know mixed feeding this is something a very common question everybody asks us can we give mixed feeding or not if the mother is virally suppressed and she is ongoing art very adherent to the art mixed feeding will not affect to so certain condition where the mixed feeding like mother has to give mixed feeding like she she is working somewhere and she has to go for work after one month or two months so definitely she can uh, express or make and give the baby but if that is not adequate she can give the additional uh, you know uh, replacement milk for some time so mixed feeding is allowed provided uh, there is a uh, art adherence and viral load suppression but yes mixed feeding increases the risk so how the art works it works for the mother for the reduces maternal viral load it provides some protection to fetus because it get transmitted uh, through the placenta and so the, there is some uh, it prevents the replication of uh, virons which is transmitted so uh, it is helpful there improving the overall health of the mother and reducing the risk of transmission we said so what is important is the mother need to be repeatedly counsel about art adherence and viral suppression what we found is when we go in the field we see that mother during pregnancy because usually after you know 6 uh, month or 5 fifth month or 6 month mother doesn't come to art center only somebody picks up the pill on behalf of her mother or maybe husband or somebody else she doesn't come to the art centers so we don't know about art adherence so something must be done she should be counsel that as far as possible she should come to the art center so that we can do the art adherence counseling to them so that you know optimal counseling and you can check the viral viral load also of her uh, mother so this is something very very important apart from that counseling sexic practices so that reinfection by different strain of hiv virus will not happen arp uh, for uh, pregnant woman so what is the, the recommended uh, recommended uh, uh, regimen for the arv art for the mother pregnant woman is mentioned here but i just want to see whether you are all awake and if somebody can type let me see how many are awake and attending yeah somebody yeah dr harshita thank you thank you so <laughs> so thank you for typing so uh, it is tld okay the, the initially if you know the previous okay so many are awake thank you minakshi thank you dipali Subhaya, also, thank you. Oh, okay, very good. So, this is initially we have the TLE regimen, and then we used to have for PI base and this, this, that, you know, single dose nevirapine and uh, HIV. So we used to have the different regimens, but now it's a TLE for university, even for the co-infected TB and hepatitis. No second thought on this. and there is no second thought there was some confusion about oh neurotic defect and these and that nothing okay tld is the best regimen and we should give to the all mothers so no question on this for the suppression during the late pregnancy uh, because what happened is uh, many times they feel ki mother may not be adherent and then there is a chances of vertical, uh, vertical transmission increases especially during the delivery what it was thought ki we will you know to give the more protection to the baby right to give the more protection to the baby it was thought ki we can do the testing of vl at 32 to 36 weeks of pregnancy okay so that we have enough time when the report is available and we can decide about her viral suppression and based on that if the viral suppression we will decide the arv prophylaxis for the baby that is dual prophylaxis we introduce and this was introduced long back in the uh, july 2021 okay so uh, this is introduced viral suppression uh, viral viral testing is introduced for the 32 to 36 weeks that is a basic reason for this it's not only that she mother should be 
the press only 32 to 36 weeks no she has to throughout the pregnancy and after the breastfeeding also during the breastfeeding also she should be by the suppress but we are applying this test now in this period because we want to provide the dual prophylaxis to baby whether we want to give the dual or single so this is like maintaining the low and undetectable viral load is left point so maintaining the low and undetectable viral load is essential to maintain the risk of minimizing the risk of transmitting hiv this is something which we are doing the certain intervention during labor and delivery uh, as we say we have seen the risk factor anything which is invasive will increase the risk so all procedures which are increases the risk of transmission should be avoided like if it's a rotomy then vacuum or step should be minimized you should be there okay and we should follow the standard uh, work precautions and for the baby like when the head is delivered wipe the infant's face and with gauze and cloth and infant is completely delivered thoroughly uh, wipe dry with towel and transfer transfer to the mother now usually in the this is you will learn more you will uh, get in more in the uh, when the baby session will be there care of the infant session will be there so care of hiv infant baby is same as the non hiv exposed babies only thing we have more careful so that we do not use the suction there so suction otherwise also suction is contraindicated in any baby than no more than 100 mm mg in all this so that part is there so you will learn that part there so it is just we are keeping this slide simple for this session so any further discussion will be there in the another session so what is the point to take here why why what is the role of art centers i am this session i'm just trying to around uh, mold around the role of art centers because most of the audience is from the art centers why because we have introduced the concept of birth planning okay i have mentioned earlier also so here you have to ask the mother where she will be delivering and you have to ensure that she delivers in the right centers because as per the maternal health guidelines okay if you see pmsa if you heard pradhan mantri surakshit matratva abhiyan as per their guidelines the hiv infected woman pregnancy pregnancy with hiv and pregnancy with syphilis is considered as a high risk cases and here the high risk cases should be given to the uh, higher center where uh, advanced uh, care of obstetric care is available so usually in fru and higher level okay simox centers they call it so you have to ensure that the mother is been you know referred to the right center so that there is no unnecessary referral will not happen okay so this is what is important birth planning is important and you have to counsel the mother to go to the right centers and also uh, pre sensitize the labor room staff for the care during the labor delivery because it's very difficult to we are giving training to all the nms but it is very difficult to go in micro detail so this is you can pre sensitize them you can tell them okay, okay this cannot be done this should be done so it will be easy for all this this is a cascade of care for the hiv exposed infant so there are any infant born to newly detected or known hiv positive at the, because the, the journey of the baby will start from labor room right so first thing is air prophylaxis to be initiated okay at the earliest so when when the when you know ki mother is pregnant and then you have already done her vl testing so you know the results so based on their vl test result you already prescribe them Uh, the mother, you know, what need to be given? Whether it's a single dose nevirapine or it is a dual prophylaxis, so it's not single dose nevirapine. It's a single prophylaxis nevirapine, or a dual prophylaxis is needed for the baby because we have to mobilize the ARB prophylaxis to the centers. Please note that again. I'm telling you. Please note that earlier we used to keep the ARB prophylaxis in each center, but now we are not doing that. the arv prophylaxis is not there in all the labor room it's there at us in icctcs or maybe at the centers so some you have to mobilize that arv prophylaxis or in case of dual prophylaxis to do it in also then the mother or the nurse in the labor room should know that it need to be given 
So please prescribe. Please ensure some mechanism in the green book where you can mention that the baby should be given air prophylaxis. Okay. Then second is infant feeding. This is also is very important. So you maybe you counsel uh, the infant. Now we are giving the white card supplement for pregnant woman and uh, our, uh, you know, our at, Nash, uh, at NACOS, uh, we are working on it. So we will be giving sub, uh, supplementary white card uh, for the uh, for the EVTHS casket where we mentioned all those things. So it will be easy for you to maintain in white card. But similarly, it should go to green, card, green book also so that the mothers are aware. So counsel the mother on infant feeding um, options and uh, if the mother is eligible for ERF, uh, only if the mother is el eligible for ERF, then mention ERF, otherwise mention about the exclusive breastfeeding in the green group, so that it will be easy for them to initiate process. In mothers coming direct in labor, infant feeding counseling to be done by the labor room nurse. So whenever you come to know our ICTC, uh, uh, you know, counselor at ICTC comes to know about the DIL cases, direct in labor cases, there we need to give the more focus and we have to ensure that she get the counseling on infant feeding counseling as well as, as well as air prophylaxis from the nearest health center. So after delivery, then the babies, the next follow-up care will be at ART center. As we said in the beginning of the time, we are looking at ART center at nodal point. So care of follow-up, you know, of the baby can be done by ART, MO and nurse. So as per the protocol. So what is, see, if you look at the point the mother and baby is always a pair right we we'll look at it as one one individual it's not we mother separate and usually as a, as a socially we look at so whenever the mother comes what you need to do is align here the key message i request everyone all the artist centers to pay attention uh, staff to pay attention we what we are asking you know we are requesting my uh, my all the teams here who are working at art centers that please align the maternal visit, mother's ART visit with the baby's care, okay? So that it will be easy for you to render the services. So suppose if the mother is at 32 to 36 weeks, if she has to come for the ART, for the, you know, BL, you give her pills, ART pills, as per, you know, the requirements. So you can tell her, if in HQ is your 32 to 36 weeks, so XYZ date. So this, you give, me, give her that much amount of medicine. medicine. And then you can see that next follow up. If you see in the slide here, you have to follow up her for the six weeks, six months, 12 months, and final at 18 months for the EID. So you can align the maternal pill distribution as per that. So after, you know, 32 to 36 weeks, if the mother is tested, usually it takes three to four months for the six weeks, you know, after delivery to have the six weeks. So you give the medicine and ask her to come on this day. So she will come along with the baby, you do her ART adherence and you do their, her, uh, you know, if additional test is required, you do it that as per your schedule, as per the requirement. And the ERD testing can be done by the uh, co-located ICTC uh, LT can do the ERD testing. Okay. And you, because we have the ART MOs, we have here the ART MOs, they are the most qualified uh, professionals in these all NSF staffs who can, you know, assess the growth and development of the baby. And we have a, you know, we can have nurses also who can also help them. They are also well qualified to assess the growth and development. So when the mother comes, when the mother, you align their pill pickup, I request again, this is something you need to do, is a humble request from me. Please, 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 you align the mother's pill pickup with the baby's EID is another requirement. The six within, you need to initiate CPT, you need to test first for the first EID and then our uh, growth and development of the baby. So please align so that it will be easy. Okay. This is something I want to say. Apart from that routine immunization care as per the national immunization schedule and additional subsequent monitoring of growth and development length, weight at six weeks, 10 weeks, 14 weeks, six, nine, 12 and 15 and 18 months as per the guidelines. You, If you see the guidelines of uh, uh, ART care at 2021, it is clearly they have given a good chart, okay, around 175 pages uh, on page number, 177 page number somewhere. So please ensure that the ART care is, uh, for the care for the HIV exposed babies has been provided as per that chart. And I think the staff at ART center got the most 
trained staff they are very expert clinical monitoring i request you to do this so this is if infant child and any time if the infant all the ead if infant found positive on ead or if the baby is symptomatic then art may be initiated by the mo and then whether the whatever the status of the baby the final ead testing of the baby should be done at 18 month of age or 3 months after suggestion of base breeding okay whichever is later so this is something important we have added this in white card supplement which i said and will be shared by the you soon so then you have to every time when the mother comes you have to ask the mother when the mother is with you know baby small baby you have to ask the mother okay are you breastfeeding it okay so then you will know okay when she in her visit so when she will stop the breastfeeding you will aware and then you can do the final uh, hiv testing for the baby hiv testing for the baby So these are the key intervention I just mentioned. Again, align mother's pill pickup with the ID of the baby. Then ensure mother ART adherence and timely viral load testing as per the national guideline. So one is at 32 to 36 weeks. But apart from that, this is an additional VL. Apart from that, whatever the regular VL testing you do after six month of uh, treat, uh, initiation of treatment and then every yearly, 12 month and every yearly, you have to do that also. Okay. We all have to do that also, and we have, particularly for mother and baby breastfeeding woman, we have to do it more because two people's life is depend on that. So is that it's not that okay? Okay, we have done the thirty two to thirty six weeks, and she is a TND. Okay, because we have also that is okay. She is TND, so what is the need to you know call her? No, you do her regular monitoring also. This is also important. So maybe if she has done her suppose if the six month if you have, if you have initiated treatment at six month of the pregnancy your VL testing will come immediately at thirty two to thirty six weeks but her routine VL testing will come after you know three or four month of the delivery maybe uh, yeah three months after delivery so you we have to do that also please 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 I request all the RT centers because when I uh, go for the Go for the ART. Say we go for the visits, and then we found the feedback that ki, okay, we are not doing the routine VL testing, which is recommended for the program for the all PLHIV. So please do the routine VL testing also for the pregnant and breastfeeding woman as per the national guideline. Okay, somebody Dipti has mentioned here if the mother is on ERF, uh, is the ERD done at six weeks, six month, twelve month, eighteen month, uh, or we skip the twelve month? No, we have to do six. Six, six month, twelve month, and eighteen month. All the uh, four, uh, four testings. So whether it is ERF or not, yes, we have to do all the four testing. Thank you, Dipti, for asking question. It was good, valid question. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Dipali, uh, to answering her to her. Okay. Then ensure optimal health of the mother during pregnancy and breastfeeding because we have seen the earlier slide that malnutrition is one of the important factor which um, causes the vertical transmission, right? Increases the risk of vertical transmission. So optimal health of the mother during pregnancy and breastfeeding is also important. Um, so maybe when the nutrition sessions will be there, I am sure you uh, there are separate nutrition sessions are there. So please ensure that, especially because we have seen many women with severe malnutrition. So usually we say, okay, you eat, you now pregnant, you eat four chapatis a day. How that poor lady who was eating a one chapati a day suddenly from tomorrow will start four chapatis a day? No. So we have to have the gradual you know, nutritional plan for her, and then we can go. we have nutritional centers also and I see which is called. So maybe you, if you needed, you can connect her, you know, link her to the nutrition and I see centers. And please ensure that she is get proper support so that her health is optimal. Okay, during the pregnancy and breastfeeding, ensure ARV and safety initiation, infant feeding counseling, immunization, assessment of growth and development of the baby, and EID. So this is all the four last sentence which is the year in the slide. I request all the uh, ARV center that uh, you know you have to mention uh, you have to ensure that care to the baby. Many a times what happens. We forget the baby. We only see the mother is on ART, whether it's VL suppressed, and then we forget the baby. But we also need to because these are the vulnerable babies, and this will be gone in detail in the next session when we have care of uh, exposed infants. Uh, 
uh, these people babies have more vulnerable because of many reason because of many reason they are expo- high rate of mortality is there okay comparatively uh, non exposed infants so these babies need to be closely monitored and who can monitor better than the art centers okay uh, our art emos are more expert our nurses at art centers are expert so they can uh, you know they can assess the baby's growth development they can check with the arb and sick tree has been initiated or not they are adherent to the art and ar prophylaxis so this is something i request here so this one there are some somebody was like you is you and you applicable to mtct M- of hiv yes it is applicable and it is that's why we should say the tnd before de- delivery before pregnancy somebody already dr swami has mentioned that if the mother receives less than four weeks of art in her viral load is tnd before delivery what could be the prophylaxis okay we will discuss that later uh, in the next slides we have this answer but yes un is applicable to mother and that's why i was like requesting pre conception counseling and ensuring mother is tnd before she plan her pregnancy okay for let's talk to the direct in labor cases uh acha yes we are just about to tell you this somebody pal kunt kuntanath has asked about is breastfeeding advisable for dil cases yes uh dil cases when the mother comes what we do the testing first there will be screening test and screening test reactive uh we link to the confirm at the site at the ictc and if positive uh, we have to link immediately to art centers so at art centers guidance okay because art centers are our treatment centers and they are the expert with the art centers guidance immediately we have to ensure the initiation of tld regimen for them and maybe uh, the nearest counselor okay nearest counselor ncp counselors from the nearest facility should ensure the mobilizing the ar prophylaxis and because these are the dil cases the baby will require dual prophylaxis so they should try to give it at the earliest preferably in 12 hour, 72 hours um, the ar prophylaxis uh, to the baby what about the question also breastfeeding is advisable yes breastfeeding is advisable for dil cases as well as unsuppressed cases also uh because the reason because uh, this will be discussed in ses- session on the care of hiv exposed in but because the question is asked and quickly saying is what we observe from the program not only in india but from the elsewhere in across globe that the baby if we do not give breastfeeding the benefit of breastfeeding like it prevents from other infection it help for the high, uh, you know optimal nutrition the baby may you know may have increased morbidity and mortality because of the other infections and usually then baby you know may have the respiratory tract infection or commonly the diarrhea uh, and then because baby then because it there is increased hospitalization and many cases there is a death also okay so we want to have the we we not only looking at hiv free uh, babies you know life we are also looking for survivor part and so the hiv free survivor is more when the mother is opti- you know baby is optimally breastfeeding so it is applicable breastfeeding is advisable for dil mothers who are and the other mother who are virally unsuppressed yes but simultaneously you take ensure that they are been counseled well for the art adherence and uh, covered with ar prophylaxis your prophylaxis immediately so that there is a risk of transmission is reduced i'm uh, yeah yeah I, i'm too fast or i'm too slow somebody can respond me in the chat box so i know usually i like to have the one one interactive sessions but here is like i'm one way going and speaking so somebody can in like write in chat box are you all with me yes somebody thank you dipali okay are are we for exposed infants the infant ar prophylaxis should be started immediately after birth okay uh, or at the first encounter with the health system okay and if there is a star box and mentioned below in red even if you start after 72 hours is okay but you have to start but try to start immediately after birth the reason is simple why you all know because it's like ar prophylaxis in the baby is kind of act as a post exposure prophylaxis the increase the risk of transmission of hiv during the delivery we take care of from the ar prophylaxis right 
so it as for the other pp where the post exposure prophylaxis say it should be given preferably within one year however here also it's important to give the baby the air prophylaxis preferably one hour but if not then you can give it to you know, whenever is available but it should not that okay 72 hours we can give okay we can send the air prophylaxis tomorrow morning or maybe okay we have two days more we'll say send on third day no no please please try to find out where the mother is going to get delivered tell the mother that please let you know the when she start labor pain so that you can ensure uh, some if like if the delivery room doesn't have the air prophylaxis you can mobilize the air prophylaxis okay it will take some time to mobilize the air prophylaxis if it's not there so this is very very important please please ensure at the earliest not like don't allow 72 hours okay at the earlier same day preferably been within one hour okay air prophylaxis is advised to infant based on the risk of the hiv transmission and risk of hiv transmission is decided by the vl testing is done in 32 to 36 weeks we have seen that right in earlier slide and you all know this so if the mother is virally suppressed only scenario when you have done the test with the mother between 32 to 36 weeks and mother is virally suppressed, then you can give the single drug air prophylaxis to the baby for six weeks. Okay, very simple. The scenario if the mother is virally suppressed, the single drug air prophylaxis for the six weeks, whether she is breastfeeding or not breastfeeding, you give for six weeks. But if the single, if the mother is either the test is not done or test done but it virally unsuppressed, or you are not aware of the whether done or whether you have done the test, but result is not aware, available, you know, awaited. In all the other scenarios, give the baby dual prophylaxis. Okay. And uh, dual prophylaxis dose here, it depends on the duration, uh, in, on the breastfeeding or not breastfeeding. So if the mother is breastfeeding, give it for 12 weeks because you want to give the cover the extended risk of transmission because breastfeeding still 12 weeks will give you adequate time to ensure that mother is mother suppressed okay so give for 12 weeks but if she is mother choose to have the replacement feeding then the duration can be six weeks okay so this is something important we are testing in 32 to 36 weeks and the result is available is important and if the mother is virally suppressed single dose air prophylaxis single uh, drug air prophylaxis so this is chart i think you are aware so that's what we have discussed the low risk infants when the mother's vl is done anytime after 32 weeks of pregnancy up to delivery okay so maybe sometimes yeah this was question asked okay we are not able to do it by 36 weeks can we do at 38 yes please do it and get the result immediately even at 40 weeks you do it and get the results immediately you ask them VL lab that they do it on priority and get the result because sometimes mother is not able to come. You can do it anytime up to delivery. Do see the results. If the viral is suppressed, then syrup never appear. And in certain cases, we give the zudividin, right? Three conditions where we give the syrup zudividin are as mentioned, this where there is a mother has HIV2 infections. Usually we have seen the mothers usually from north side there's less HIV2 infection. Usually we have seen few cases again there in the southern side. Northern side there's hardly one two cases. But yes, if the, there is a mother with uh, HIV in two infection, co-infection or two infection exclusively, then we have to give the syrup syrup. And single dose never appear. But that is very rarely nowadays you get the cases, you know, because we stopped single dose never appear from 2013. So less likely any mother who has given single dose never have been then but yes occasionally rarely you get the cases there also you have to give syrup zudividin but this is a third is very important and i want to bring you know all my art staff's attention here please you are the only expert here in the program who knows very well the art regimen i'm i'm there are other but the way you understand nobody else understand so 
the pi pace regiment you know there are still there are mothers who are pi pace regiment you know second line third line now because of tld some pi pace has come down because we have transited on tld regiment but they are uh, we have seen the mother who are pi pace regiment and uh, many times most of time the air prophylaxis is delivered by a counselor you know who are de deputed at ictc centers and that person may or may not know pi pace regiment and uh, so he will give never a pain so he, it will not work there right we all know so please i request so especially uh, i request all my art team here who are listening to me please ensure if your mothers are on pi bs regimen please take little more time and ensure in their green book or somewhere tell the mother because then she's mothers the best thing is you educate our mother okay and tell her that okay you need to do it so she will tell okay and then i have seen the if you educate the mother now she takes care a lot of things many times i talk to the mother pregnant mother and i ask her okay tell me your cdv count she is not now i ask her, okay when was your vl testing done she is not aware so uh, maybe we can take time and we can uh, uh, just talk to her and just two minutes more or five minutes more and i will tell you okay you should know this this and this you should remember this three things i think she will remember so maybe uh, we have to keep that sort of good instead of so pi based regimen i'm talking about ki you have to ensure in the green book somewhere okay that the mother should be uh, the baby should be given zidovudin so this is a three the third one is important in present scenario so this is the for the low risk infant whether we have the vl test done and its result is available rest of the other scenarios where the mother is uh, not on art her you know vl is not done or she is not suppressed viral not suppressed or the mother newly identified hiv positive within 6 weeks of delivery means and in her pnc period which is 6 weeks you identify the babies uh, mother for some reason maybe by index testing or something and then you identify the babies also uh, she has the baby which is uh, you know 6 weeks of age less than 6 weeks of age in this cases you will add the dual prophylaxis now there are two hashtag here uh, okay uh, so here is mention given zidovudin syrup is not available syrup nevrapine should be used for the first 14 days and af after the birth and uh, should be used for the first 14 days after the birth and after that syrup lopinavir ratanavir can be given okay because we know ki ratanavir lopinavir cannot be given in first 6 weeks uh, first 14 days sorry first 14 days so we start the lopinavir ratanavir after 6 months and uh, another alternative that can be used is a zedalan tablet but again there is uh, some formulations are available but and uh, pulverization uh, if you can do it and use it but best way is that is these all are alternative in rare scenarios but why to bring the rare scenarios when we know see we have only 20000 women that also we come to know in the pregnancy her viral load suppression or not suppression so we have 3 4 months in up in hand in hand okay where we can decide we can get the medicine not 3 4 like one month okay but we know that mother will be there right mother when the pregnancy when the, if the pregnancy we know the mother's pattern so we we can easily can arrange the you know prophylaxis for the mother so that should be proactive you know predicting okay this mother will require how many we have that some calculation we have to do simple calculation maybe in art center we were calculating last time we may not you may not have even one two cases per day maybe high load centers may have one two cases per day but otherwise you will not have one case per day also so um, please if you can pay, pay attention is for the two two people's life and you can do it i request you to you know look at it and ensure that your prophylax available now is a your uh, so i, I mean that you pay little bit and the medicine is not costly is 100 rupees or something okay we can easily get it okay so uh, sorry so this is something which we need to uh, look at and your prophylaxis as we say six weeks if the mother is exclusive replacement feeding but if it's breastfeeding we have to continue for 12 weeks um uh, shweta ji what till what time is our session uh 3 o'clock ma'am oh is it 3 o'clock i thought it's 4 o'clock i'm sorry so that's why i was going slow okay this is uh, 
so we we can continue right yes yes ma'am oh i'm sorry for this i was a little slow for that aeroprophylaxis so this is something which you have seen we have know it now the doses of nevirapine and zorudins are the same whether earlier before introduction of dual prophylaxis so if the birth weight is to uh, 2 to 2.5 gram kg then it's 1 ml and if more than 2.5 kg 1.5 ml now for the 6 weeks to 6 months 6 months to 9 month and 9 month and more this is for the mother who you know which babies we identify pnc so anyway for this babies you have to take the sasep and pcoe references you can start with ar prophylaxis which is available nevirapine and then you take the sasep and pcoe Uh, ref, uh, you know, refer to the sasep or pcoe. Similarly, for the Participants are requested to kindly bear with us. Ma'am will join shortly. now quickly we'll see management of uh, syphilis infected pregnant women exposed infants so if you see we have we do screening for your rdt or rpr kit somebody want to say yes yeah, ma'am my screen I'm is to share your screen again okay okay one minute just give me got it so can you see my screen yes ma'am yes okay in my system i can see okay if you can see okay so what is there very simple i'll uh, key point for the syphilis i will touch so all the pregnant women screen with dual rdt or rpr kit so whenever if they are reactive they should start with a benzodiazepine penicillin okay it a nearest health facility wherever available and then we have to do the tighter monitoring with rpr because we all know we have to see whether the uh, it is you know uh, reducing infection or not so we have to tighter monitoring we have to do it so tighter monitoring is usually done is 3 months uh, after treatment or before delivery whichever is earlier so and then what is important is which is not been highlighted here maybe the slide is need further it is here okay uh, so and then for the baby we give the uh, with uh, we as per the, now we talk to the child health division and now the baby should be tried to be you know treated at the snsu or nicu at the delivery so that their Ma'am, should I share the screen? my screen has also gone yes can you see i have to reshare yes screen is gone ma'am uh, you want me to share the screen ma'am uh, 
no problem i'll share is all equal why is going actually maybe some connectivity issue ma'am okay my voice is good yeah, okay voice is good. okay and screening of rpr but if you are screening at rpr usually is available at days rc and the mother is reactive you have to straight forward give the three doses at week 0 1 and 2 okay and then you follow up the mother at three months or 32 weeks of pregnancy which is earlier okay and then retreat okay institutional delivery by pediatrician similar to uh, dial cases for the syphilis also uh, if the mother is uh, reactive you have to treat the mother for the uh, syphilis but uh, pregnant woman uh, you know you have to and then we have to refer the baby to the sncu nicu this is the flow of the care which we have talked about okay this is for the baby so baby is like referred to the nearest sncu or where the pediatrician is available pediatrician will assess the baby and then the blood will be collected for qualitative and quantitative rpr and vdrl and same time the mother sample also will be collected and there are two scenarios one it's like infant is asymptomatic and infant's rpr titer is four fold higher than the mother's titer so in that case you have to give the curative treatment but baby is asymptomatic and titer also is uh, not higher than mother's titer then you look at the whether mother is treated adequately or not So if the mother is not treated adequately you give the baby curative treatment and if the mother is treated adequately and there's no evidence of relapse you give the prophylactic treatment for the baby so this is for the baby so when the mother is adequately treated and the titer is low you give the prophylactic treatment but rest of the scenario where the titer is increased from the than the mother or there is no documentation of mother's adequate treatment you give the curative treatment to the baby and follow up the baby at 14 week and 6 month so there are some case, case scenario with permission uh, from the uh, what is uh, sweta ji we can we can come to do we can continue uh, we have 15 minutes ma'am we can do that 15 minutes more okay yeah. so let me see there any chat questions also oh uh, ma'am we'll take up the question yeah. at last okay so we'll see that okay so yeah. case scenario okay now now it's your time okay so i'm say i'm reading the scenario and you tell me the answer mrs c received triple duct arv prophylaxis in 2012 during her first pregnancy she was then advised on tle okay and now uh, but she stop after 7 days after discontinuing the breastfeeding now she reports with art center with 2 months of pregnancy her latest cd for count is 420 what regimen you will advise somebody already said tnd very good yes so we will ask the tnd one tablet one tablet for the day life long now the second question uh sweta ji will pass the chocolate to the all the person who has answered dr anita pshu sali do that ha you will do that uh, so many others also so next question question 2 mother viral load results done at 34 weeks of gestation and was 500 copies per ml okay and she is planning breastfeeding now planning to give breastfeeding so what prophylaxis you will give to the baby and duration oh already this minakshi's answer 6 weeks never a pin very good okay you get the how many weeks okay very good everybody is answering six weeks very easy god okay six weeks uh, never a pin this is then uh, i don't have to explain like right, when they are answering well right for the pause of the time i, I can go to more scenarios yes, yes ma'am and we'll be circulating the ppt also later okay very good now the next question d has reported art center at 7 month of pregnancy she is art name and her cd4 is 385 what regimen okay tld very good so tld as we said earlier in everyone there is a tld now there is no much thought you know usually there are very rare there is a contraindication for tld so or we will start with tld okay scenario and questions one next mothers oh this is very important tough question 36 weeks of gestation and 20000 copies okay and she is planning breastfeeding so what prophylaxis you will give now 
ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड कॉपीज बी एल एंड शी वॉन्ट्स टू बेस्ट फीड द बेबी वॉट यू विल गिव येस साइली सेड नेवर पीन एंड जुडुबीन एंड ट्वेल्व वीक्स Piyushi also said the same. Dual prophylaxis. Somebody mentioned twelve weeks. Okay, duration twelve weeks. Zero neuropin. Very good. Very good. So most of them. Nagendra also answered. Very good. And for twelve weeks. Very good. Good. So we are knowing this. So we have to give the. What is important is. Can you tell me what additional you will ask? It's not an explanation. Somebody please answer. Apart from this, what you will do more to the mother? Adherence to ART, yes, right, Minakshi. What else? You are on right track. Adherence counseling, very good. Adherence counseling, and then because she she has we started seven months, so maybe because her next due will be as per routine, it will come around three month of gestation, right? No, three four four month. So we have to do again the VL for priority for her. Okay, right, good. Now next question, scenario three. Mrs. F is a asymptomatic postnatal PLHIV who present at the ART center three days after delivery. Okay, she is a PNC case. Anna said it was 550. She wants. She has opted for exclusive replacement feeding. The baby is 2.4 kg. What is the next step for management for the baby? So what we will do for the baby? She said ERF. So what we will give medicine? Post testing, okay. VL, we will not do her VL because now she is in PNC, right? I understand from the she is after delivery comes, so VL is not required now. Okay, ART initiation for due for six weeks. Yes, we will initiate ART, sorry, ART prophylaxis for due, and we have will start her TLD tablet, nutritional counseling, and other feeding practices, exclusive replacement feeding. Then next scenario is oh sorry what is the next step for management of the babies okay so air prophylaxis after seventy two hours one ml once a day because the baby is one for two point four kg okay so doses also and then her mother nevi her baby becomes high risk of transmission hence okay fine six weeks here next scenario. Mrs. R, a newly diagnosed PLHIV, has been recently linked to the ART centers with her three-month-old baby who is breastfeeding. How will you? How will we manage her? Three-month-old baby. She is newly diagnosed. Archana has said, start your prophylaxis. Okay. DBS test, okay. Start your prophylaxis. TLD to mother, baby sasa prefer, very good. Initiate ART from mother and for the ART for baby, okay. So what is required is initiate TLD as you said rightly. You tell her the uh, this is for the mother. You will tell her the feeding, counseling, and protective sex, and for the baby you will send the DBS as somebody has rightly said because she has come at three months. And her first EID has to be at one and a half month. So as for that, she is eligible. You send a DBS sample as PID algorithm. Start CPT because CPT also need to be started at six weeks. So start CPT. Check for the any clinical signs of the whether the baby has HIV infection or not, and SASF refer for the management of HIV exposed infants and immunization as per the schedule. Okay. And then if the T uh, T N P C R is negative, then you will call her a six month and twelve month as per the algorithm. But you need to have D P S. Somebody has rightly one person has mentioned the chat box about D P S and Subha Subha Guterda. Okay, and one or two person only mentioned. So Swetha ji is going to send two chocolates for him. Okay, good. So next questions, case five. Mrs. L, 26 years, uh, was registered at ART center in 2012, and she was initiated on ART at that time, TLE, in 2015, and she became lost to follow up after one year as she shifted her village. She has now reported an active labor. How should you manage the case? Okay, so she is she is to immediately given single tablet of TLD, 
and she should be linked to the art centers the next day restarting lifelong art and then you will counsel her art adherence care of nipple and breast feeding counseling and protective uh, sex practices because we want to okay and then what you will give the baby if the sudurudin is not available oh see here they say ki sudurudin also is not available and syrup gopanavar ratanavar also not available what you will do zdlen yes pc say we should give zdl tablet okay so uh, not available you can give zdl ftc tablet as per the weight brand twice a day till 12 weeks of age so the dose comes is a that bottle comes you know that pills but zdl 60 mg one dispensable tablet twice a day for 12 weeks so as per the mother uh, it's art her baby okay so that we know because zdl has the combination of zdrobodin uh, and uh, uh, this so we can give the zdl tablet easily duration 12 weeks as the mother is breastfeeding and she has not uh, done the art okay the, taken art before delivery so we can give her 12 weeks oh this is we covered all the scenarios so any question if zdl is p is also not available somebody has asked no no you cannot have that kind of way there was initially in between there was talk out but we have done lot of effort to ensure the medicine comes on time Uh, i'm sure we will not do that again uh, you know stock out situation where nothing is available like no zodrodi no zdlen and everything uh, yeah i don't I, I, it is yeah, <laughs> it is we have to ensure that we have adequate mother we know our mother so we have to ensure that we have adequate medicine in hand uh, for the, that mothers uh, who are pregnant and about to deliver okay uh, over to uh, is there any question you can type yeah. in the chat allow, box yeah please allow me to share my screen if you can stop sharing sure is it yeah 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 i just show just give me two minutes thank you to all the participants for staying connected Yeah, is the screen visible, ma'am? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So these are the questions from the chat box, ma'am. Uh, one is: mm -hmm. Is U is equal to U applicable to MTCT of HIV? Yes, very much. Okay. Is that's why, and I have seen that question when it comes, and that's why you have to for the at least for the known pregnant woman, you please ensure she is TND before she. you know plan her pregnancy yes is applicable and later also optimal adherence not only in the pregnancy but also breastfeeding i am telling you from my own experience when i go in field i see the breastfeeding women are not coming to art centers they are on proxy pill pick up for years also i have seen the mother for two years she has never visited art center so please i requesting please for the unu to ensure art adherence is important and uh, you please uh, yeah is applicable in this city yes is breastfeeding advisable in dial mothers yeah, that has been taken ma'am both the questions yes. have been taken uh, the uh, fourth question if mother has received less than 4 weeks of art and a viral load is uh, not to be detected before delivery what could be prophylaxis ah. for the infant uh, yes so it the infant as per because we are going as per the now we go as a viral load result tnd so uh, definitely the mother baby will keep single uh, drug prophylaxis and this is possible you are getting this even we are getting this cases because because the uh, tld is such a wonderful drug we have seen in the four weeks viral suppression and valid question because that person must have seen the cases yes we have to keep single dose uh, single drug ar prophylaxis Right. The last question: Duration of ART is not considered in ART prophylaxis. So, what if the duration is less than six months on ART and viral load is not available? Then it is, as I say, that any situation where viral load is not done or test result is not available, same applicable here. We will give the dual prophylaxis. Thank you so much, ma'am, for facilitating such an important session.
uh, since we have overshooted the time, uh, I won't keep the participants waiting too long. We'll quickly run the post test map. Uh, all the participants are requested in case they have uh, any questions, please send them to us and we'll pass it on to ma'am and get uh, uh, take the answers from her. Uh, Kiran sir, can we quickly run the post test? Yeah, thank you. Uh, all the participants are requested to please attempt the post test. The e-poll questions are now available on your screen. Can you please share the pre and post test result with me? Sure, ma'am. We'll do that. Okay, so maybe uh, because uh, usually you can display the result uh, then and there also, like pre-test result at least. Uh, so the pre-test are not know. available right away, ma'am. Uh, but the post-test will be available on the screen. So we can have a look at the post-test uh, polls at least. Okay, because usually in Zoom, in certain settings, they have the settings where you can display the result check image. Check that. I, I understand. The pre and the post, uh, both are displayed uh, at the same time. I'll check on that, ma'am. Mm -hmm. For now, we'll just look at the post-test results. Sure, 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 fine. Requesting all the participants to please attempt the post-test. I hope the participants were able to understand. I think uh, they know many things, but few things which is need to be emphasized. I hope the take-home message they have taken. Uh, Twenty percent of the participants have attempted the post test. I'll display the results. Only twenty percent. Yeah. <laughs> Please, all should have answered. Duration of ART. So, I can't see the result. Test result. Are you unable to see the test result, ma'am? I'll just read you. Yes. A single most factor which determines vertical transmission of HIV. The highest percentage is optimal vital suppression during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Uh, second question, type of ARV prophylaxis for baby depends on uh, highest percentage is viral load test result conducted during 32 uh, to 36 weeks. ARV prophylaxis mm -hmm. should be prescribed by highest percentage medical officers, preferably ART medical officer. Time of Good. Care, highest responses are six weeks, six months, 12 months, and 18 months. And okay. which of the following statement is false? Uh, again, highest percentage is exclusive breastfeeding is uh, replacement feeding is a viable uh, option. So that okay. is okay. the result. Uh, I'll quickly okay. run the post uh, correct answers also, ma'am. This will also be circulated with the PPT. So uh, participants, please rest assured you will get all these answers. The correct answer for uh, first question, single most factor which determines vertical transmission of HIV is optimal viral suppression during pregnancy and breastfeeding period. Type of ARV prophylaxis for baby depends on viral load test results conducted during 32 to 36 weeks of pregnancy. ARV prophylaxis should be prescribed by the medical officer, preferably ART medical officer. Time of EID is 6 weeks, 6 months, 12 months and 18 months. And which of the following statements is false? So all the three statements are true except the second one. Exclusive replacement uh, feeding is a viable public health strategy in India. Thus, it is it can be recommended and promoted as optimal infant feeding strategy for HIV infected mothers in India. This statement is false. Thank you so much, ma'am, for facilitating this session. I know you're too busy and the, thank you for taking out time for us. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving me opportunity and I would love to connect again with my ART teams uh, if for uh, something, if you can, if something you can focus on the birth planning, maybe it's a new concept and we can have the more elaborated 
session on infant feeding yeah. and we have this care of hiv exposed infant ma'am uh, the program but that also effect. yeah but then that also become like the way today is that also become that is more intensive technical intensive and it takes time so maybe we can okay. have a smaller focus um, session on it suggest we could have a technical session followed by a session for uh, question answers like case studies uh, we could do it with the, uh, that format whenever you yeah, we can have time. yeah sure we can discuss that offline maybe sure thank you so much ms sweta for giving time and i take and thank you for my team for joining thank you everyone thank you everyone for staying with us uh, sorry we have overshooted the endless uh, time Thank you once again and we'll conclude this session.